Mr. Vera. Alan Vera, Chairman, Harris County Republican Party Ballot Security Committee, testifying in support of House CSSB 9. For the record, we oppose this bill in the Senate. We're usually very leery of election omnibus bills, and the SB9 you receive from the Senate is the fire, dumpster fire of all omnibus bills. Let me quickly explain why your version of the bill is better than what you receive from the Senate. Section 502 of the Senate bill you received was the product of a chain of logic that would give Mr. Spock of Star Trek a migraine. During the interim, the Senate Select Committee on Election Integrity interviewed many alleged experts on computer security who seemed devoted to the chicken little approach to DRE voting security. Instead of following through with a bill laying out specific criteria for continuous improvement of security of DRE systems, similar to what I passed out to you now, the Senate chose instead to try to force all of Texas back to the election medium with the historically worst track record of election fraud, paper ballots. Even worse, the original bill would leave all of Texas dependent on a single vendor for voting equipment. And even worse, the original bill prescribed the same voting system used by Broward County, Florida, the epicenter of election chaos. And as they defended that selection, we've heard, and you'll probably hear today, some a plethora of misleading statements number one it's not a paper ballot it's a verifiable paper trail it's a paper record wrong when the official record of the cast ballot is saved on paper it's a paper ballot Two, broward county doesn't have unique serial numbers like texas on their ballots wrong miss pat nesbib director of election day operations for the broward county supervisor of elections says quote every ballot here has a precinct number a ballot style number and a unique serial number and three sb9 proposes a hybrid not a paper ballot system wrong a true hybrid system would capture and retain an electronic record of the voters voter selections when the voter made those selections and cast the ballot. The proposed SB9 system, the former one, had a touchscreen printer interface which directly which directly recorded nothing of the voter selections and simply generated the printout of a paper ballot fed into a typically unreliable scanner. The scanner's memory, it's not a memory, it's simply a counter falls far short of DRA technology and reliability. Your CSSB9 is a significant improvement to the Senate's version, even though there's still some hair on it. We urge you to hold, stick to your guns. Do not give in to the chicken little hysteria. I'll be happy to answer questions. Members, any questions? Yes. Representative Swanson? Yes. Um, thank you for coming, Mr. Vera. Um, I had some questions about why have paper ballots been so vulnerable for election fraud? Historically, the two primary reasons are they are subject to counterfeit. If people can counterfeit our currency, they can counterfeit a paper ballot. Every time you read or hear a story of an election where suddenly at the last minute cartons of paper ballots show up, the chances are very high they've been counterfeited. The second reason is post-election alteration. With a paper ballot, anyone can add an extra tick or a mark on the line of any candidate and change the election result. If a voter's ballot shows two votes for the same office, that vote is discounted completely. So counterfeiting in quantity and post-election alteration are the two primary vehicles for paper ballot fraud. Okay, do you have any, oh, any other examples, specific examples for us that would demonstrate the vulnerability of paper ballots? Certainly on the counterfeiting side, um, this will tell you how old I am. The 1948 election of Lyndon Johnson in Texas to the U.S. Senate was marked by the last second appearance of 40 cartons of paper ballots in the exact numerical serial number sequence that put him over the top of that election. More recently, 2008 November in Minnesota, on election night, candidate Al Franken was declared the loser. The next morning, 14 cartons of paper ballots showed up mysteriously and changed the election result. So that, those are clear and frequent examples of the counterfeiting side of it. The post-election post alteration are more difficult to catch, but there are some, and I think if Mr. Johnson, who worked for Representative Bohack for years, comes here, he'll be able to give you some exact examples in Texas of the alteration. Okay, so why did you refer to the ballot scanners as unreliable? The ballot scanners are unreliable based on experience. Um, in Harris County, I conduct, a I conduct a lot of the recount elections, or I at least provide the staff and supervision. One of my last ones was Representative Kane's recount on the, uh, in his primary. We always start with the mail ballots. The mail ballots are paper ballots, which are counted through scanners. 
we find in every recount that we change the results on the mail ballots because the scanner doesn't pick it up correctly. If the voter makes an, an errant mark near the line, it counts it wrong. And so in that particular election, as an example, 42 ballots had their votes changed when the people looked at them because the scanner erred. And that's been true in recount after recount. The scanners just aren't as reliable as the electronic. So if you said that there's only one company that makes these, they call them hybrid, but I realize that the paper is what, mm -hmm. if they disagree, the paper rules, so therefore it is a paper ballot system. Um, but if only one company has certified machines like that, and if, I mean, this committee said it's gotten changed, but if there were a requirement that counties use those machines, would it be safe to call that a vendor bill? I would call it a vendor bill. In fact, I did in the Senate. I call it a vendor bill, and I also call it an unfunded mandate, because even though there are bills running to try to provide financial help to the counties to buy the equipment, none of that includes the paper. And for that system, the paper has been charged as high as $2 per sheet of paper. Wow. So you've been coming for years, and you've been doing this research. So you've worked on elections across the country. Are you aware of any other serious problems with the voting system described in the original version of SB9? Two experiences, one indirect, one direct. In Florida, when I've canvassed the uh, election integrity people there, uh, they report that this particular system is subject to frequent jamming when the ballot is coming out of the touchscreen interface and when the ballot's being fed into the scanner. And the jamming requires the voter to get help from a clerk who then can see the voter's ballot. And that's been a complaint that's been running pretty heavily through Florida. The other example was May of 2018, Harris County. Uh, Umble ISD was unable to secure DRE equipment for their bond election on the May Uniform Election Day. They used this DS-200 system, borrowed it, rented it, and had two members of my ballot security committee were the election judge and alternate for that election, and they had a disaster with that system. Uh, not only were the jamming problems is, uh, an issue, but at one point, the memory card, which is a thumb drive like you could buy at a retail store, failed, and they had to take all the ballots out that had already been cast during early voting for the past five days, reset the machine to zero, and refeed every paper ballot again to catch up on the count. Wow. Wow. So, if so, and I do appreciate you bringing that out. That's the first time I've heard it about the concerns I've heard about people losing their secret ballot because mm -hmm. it's printed right there for everyone to see. And if other voters or a clerk are standing there mm -hmm. or want to assist them in feeding their ballot in, they get to read how the person voted. And so if some company could produce a true DRE voting machine system, the type that does not use this paper thing, that, but it also they could make one that provided a paper record of the ballot, would your ballot security committee still have concerns? Our concerns would be less, but we still have a serious concern, and that is what happens to that paper record or receipt. Uh, in many, can't we heard in this committee last session, t story after story, testimony after testimony from South Texas, where voters were intimidated and told that if they didn't vote for a certain commissioner or a certain utility commissioner, that their spouse, father, in-law would lose their job. The concern with any piece of paper with the actual ballot floating around gives the unions and others the opportunity to demand to the voters show them the ballot the way it was cast. That would be a concern. We'd have to figure out some way to make sure the ballot receipt never left the polling place. That, that's a huge concern. Thank you. And can you explain one more time why the voting system proposed in the original SB9 would not be a true hybrid system, as people like to call it? Uh, the word hybrid in today's lexicon uh, is most easily understood with automobiles. A hybrid automobile can run on at least two different sources of energy, usually electric and, and fossil fuels, gasoline. That's a hybrid, and you can switch between the, four, between the two, and they both work. To be a true hybrid, the voting system would have to capture directly the voter's vote as they entered it and cast the ballot and store that in memory and then provide a paper ballot. The system proposed by the original SB9 did not do that. There was no electronic capture of the voter's input. And so it's not truly a hybrid. Okay, well, 
Thank you so much for this information because there's been a tremendous amount of misinformation about these machines and I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions, members? Yeah, just one. Representative Kane. Mr. Vera, you'd mentioned this machine and the, uh, the memory card and you'd made a statement that you can buy one at the store. It's my understanding that you actually cannot do so. That the the prongs line up differently. It's shaped differently. You cannot put a regular USB memory card into these machines. Is that correct? That may be, sir. That may be correct. Okay. That, it, that it may be different. But when my two committee members reported back to me after that election, they were saying it's just like something okay. you'd buy at Walmart. I just want for people to know. Okay. You cannot. It is custom made. You cannot use a regular Thank USB you. drive. Thank you. Thank you.